So we're going to be doing a little bit of VR and we're going to look at how earthquakes are actually made. Google, Microsoft and Apple are battling for dominance in classrooms like this. They all want their devices in the hands of the next generation of consumers. And let's go ahead and do a screenshot of that and so we can add that into our notes. EdTech is big business. It's expected to hit $43 billion this year, with 46% of that growth happening in K through 12. So we wanted to find out who is winning in education. Something like the layers of the earth is really hard to explain as a concept and to be able to see it spinning and moving on the screen, it really comes alive for them. At the Hamlin School in San Francisco, Rachel Davis's sixth grade science class uses Google's Virtual Reality Expeditions app on an Apple iPad to explore the layers of the Earth. Go ahead and look at it from different angles, like look around it, move around it. Then they create animated movies about what they learned or make their own iBook with Apple apps. So we use a writing app, but you can also make books with many different varieties of like text and stuff. The all-girls private K-8 through school has an iPad for every student. Starting in sixth grade, the girls take their iPads home, along with all the Google apps they use for assignments. We do definitely use a lot of the Google sharing products, so it's kind of like with Google you have the, that sharing capability, so we kind of have Google on our Apple devices because they're able to collaborate. I would say that Apple is, is winning or is, is represented the most in independent school. With that being said, we have Apple devices, but all of our students use Google Apps for Education every day as well. So. Hopefully the students are winning, and we're leveraging the right tool for the students. Apple used to be in the lead in U.S. schools, but Google has soared to the top in the last several years. In 2018, Chromebooks made up a whopping 60% of all laptops and tablets purchased for U.S. K-12 classrooms, up from just 5% in 2012. Microsoft comes in second at 22%, and Apple trails behind with 18% of shipments to U.S. schools in 2018. But Apple and Microsoft are making moves to change this. Because Hamlin is a private school, it was able to afford an iPad for every student. But for most public schools, price can be prohibitive. Google is in the lead largely because its Chromebooks are the cheapest option for classrooms, starting at just $149. Laptops with Microsoft Windows start at $189 for schools. And last year, Apple discounted its iPad to $299 for schools, down from $329 retail. Education is such a big part of who we are as a company and has been for 40 years. Apple just announced a new iPad Air for $499 and iPad Mini for $399, which offers keyboard support for the first time and are now compatible with the Apple Pencil. At Hamlin, they use Chromebooks, but iPads are definitely king. I think my favorite is the iPads because they're just super fast working and I just think they're so easily accessible, which is really nice for schoolwork. I like using the iPad, except sometimes with flashcards, it's easier to make your own flashcards so it gets in your head more. I like the iPad because you can carry a lot of like files and it's not very like, it's not really heavy, but it can store a lot of information. It would be really hard to do all of our work without our iPad. While Hamlin's hardware is dominated by Apple, its teachers use Google's education apps. This allows me to see my students' work. So if I wanted to see like their graphing quiz, there are all with their grades, all their um, quizzes, and then I can just open up how they did on their graphing. When we decided to build uh, G Suite for Education products. We decided to focus on teachers to make their jobs easier. Uh, there's research that shows that the biggest impact in a, in a child's education is the teacher, and that's the way to impact outcomes. I can circle it, I can draw on it, so that when she gets it, I can then return it back to her and she'll get those comments on her work. At South by Southwest earlier this month, Google set up a classroom of the future, where it showcased its latest apps for schools. Our products work on any device. So if a school finds that an iPad is right for them, our, our products work really well. If you talk to an Apple person you know, in the sales channel, they'll say, yeah, our products work really well with Google Classroom and with G Suite, and, and that's great. We care about the school being able to choose what device they use and being able to really have a, a strong learning system no matter what. 
Outside the U.S., the winner isn't Google or Apple. Those two are tied for just 10% of global classroom sales. Microsoft is a big winner globally, with 57% of classroom sales outside the U.S. in 2018. This is largely due to emerging markets that lack the internet connection that Chromebooks need to function. Over the last five years or so, we've been really uh, reinvigorated in terms of the, the needs of schools and recognize the importance of technology to transform the futures of our students going forward. In January, Microsoft announced three new education products that may help it compete in the U.S. Its new Classroom Pen is specifically designed for students. It's smaller, has fewer moving parts, and a slot to keep it tethered to the tablet so it's less likely to get lost. A device with a pen can actually improve learning outcomes over 38% of a laptop without a pen. So our hardware partners at Microsoft have been working to make devices really work well with pens in classrooms. Microsoft also announced a new Lenovo tablet that allows students to write on the screen with a number two pencil. At 289, it's likely meant to compete with Apple's 299 iPad for schools. Microsoft also has tools to help students learn to code. My dad codes, and I like coding, so. Back at Hamlin, third graders are learning to code on MacBook Airs. You're kind of just telling someone, like, go this way and go that way, or jump and stuff like that. Some of the high schools they go to might be a Chromebook school, they might be a Mac school, they might be an iPad school. We want to expose our girls to a variety of different technologies so they can make an informed decision. While Google, Microsoft, and Apple continue to vie for dominance, oh. teachers at Hamlin will turn to whatever blend of tech makes the most sense for its students. I am a snowflake. We used to just have the ability of taking a test or making a model and a project and explaining, and now they're having to, you know, draw things and manipulate things in 3D objects. And to me, that seems more challenging, and how they can explain it and how clear they are on what the concepts are, they see the world so differently than we did, and I'm really excited to see what happens to them as they continue to grow in the skills, especially in high school and beyond. These girls are going to do amazing things.